still quite a bit of room over on your right. If you want to head in that area, you'll be able to look on any one of those monitors. Glance over someone's shoulder or have a seat on the floor. Or you'll just want to close the door. Okay. Folks, you just need to be able to see a computer or television monitor and make yourself comfortable for about 10 minutes or so. Well, good afternoon. How's everyone doing? Great. Hey, a fair amount of energy left in this group. <laughs> Welcome to the Walt Disney Imagineering Labs. My name's Alex. I work for a division of the Disney company known as Imagineering. We're the people that design and build all the attractions you see in the theme parks. And in this office, we're working on Disney Vision. It's a new attraction. It's not finished yet. But we're far enough along, we can let you get a sneak preview so you'll see a bit of what we're working on. And I'll tell you some of the history of Imagineering as well and let you know how we got started. Uh, Walt started us out. He was the first Imagineer. He had quite a knack for applying new technologies to the field of entertainment. Walt Disney was the first person to add synchronized sound and also color to cartoons. And he created a multi-plane camera to give greater depth and realism to his animated films. He was also the first person to add stereo sound to any motion picture, and that was with Fantasia. He called it Fantasound originally. A few years later, Walt created Imagineering, a group primarily made up of artists, engineers, and architects. Our first job was to help Walt design and build Disneyland. As always, we turn to technologies developed for other industries, including the space program, to create breakthroughs in entertainment like audio animatronics, which we have in our lives. Walt Disney called that blending of creative imagination and engineering imagineering. For the last 43 years, we've carried on in his tradition. We combine new technologies to the field of entertainment. And that brings us to our demonstration of Disney Vision. Disney Vision is on the cutting edge of a technology known as virtual reality. It's also called VR for short. Virtual reality is a world that's created in and that exists entirely within a computer. It's a three-dimensional world complete with sights and sounds. You can enter the world, move around in it, and even interact with it. VR was invented in the 1960s and it was first used to help train airline pilots. So imagine if we can create a world believable enough to train a pilot, think what could be done with virtual reality at Disney in the field of entertainment. We've been working on that at the Imagineering Labs for about four and a half years. But today I'll show you VR used to fly something that's going to be quite a bit different than an airplane. Imagine that we could let you step into the Disney movie Aladdin, give you your very own magic flying carpet, and let you go flying through the city streets. Does that sound like fun? You're good, because we're spending a lot of money on this project. <laughs> and that's what Disney Vision's all about. Now to know a little bit about what we're doing, I'll tell you how we build a VR world. When you build something in a computer, that's called computer modeling. We do it using sophisticated silicon graphics computers. And the equation for a magic lamp began with a single polygon. A polygon's just a flat shape made of three or more straight sides, like a triangle or a square. These are both polygons. They're the building blocks we use to create our worlds. We started with this wedge-like shape, just rotated it around. That gave us a shape for the base of the lamp. In a similar fashion, we added the body and created the lid, spout, and handle. For today's demonstration, you'll also see one of our finished scenes, the three-dimensional city of Agrabah. It's about 100 buildings. Our city took more than four months to create. Creating a character like Iago for virtual reality is a very complex task, much more so than making the magic lamp. Because Iago is very active, he's got to move around, walk, talk, and fly. So we have to design joints for him and plan for all of his movements. All of his animation is created in and stored inside the computer. And here's one of the clips that we're currently working on. Let me introduce myself. I'm Iago the parrot. I was in a lab, remember? It was about a talking parrot. That's what the movie was about. And then they threw in some extra characters just as time filler. Made a lot of money, I didn't see a dime from it. Not a dime. That brief bit of three-dimensional animation, just 20 seconds worth, is made up of 1,200 frames. It took three and a half weeks to create. And for the final full attraction we're working on, since Iago is going to be the star, he is scheduled to have about 100 times that amount of animation. Another process of animation we're working with is something we call the animator's mirror. With this method, an animator is hooked up to a computer as they act out a scene, and the character in the computer copies their or mirrors their movements, and we record it. I've got brand new rugs and I've got new rugs. Now, give your training for the rugs. Now, that stuff's a lot of fun, but it's only part of the story. The other part's up here on the platform. If you want to glance this way, I'll show you our sixth generation. It's called a head-mounted display, also known as an HMD for short. 
One of these is what lets you step inside of a computer-generated world like Disney Vision. Inside the helmet, there are two very high-resolution computer screens, and it presents slightly different views to your eyes that makes our virtual world appear three-dimensional. For the ears, we've included three-dimensional sound processing. It surrounds directly, even lets you pinpoint or locate sounds just like you do in the real world. And in the nose is a tracking device that tells the computer where the HMD is looking, then the computer will adjust and update the sights and sounds of the scene accordingly. The computers we use are some of the largest and fastest graphics computers that exist in the world. They were specially built for this project by Silicon Graphics. Each of them is roughly equivalent to about 2,000 home computers, and they're located behind the glass walls over on your left. You'll see them closer in a moment because we're going to mock-up area in a second. Programs and storylines. We're going to get some help from Pat and Casey on platforms one and two. Jonathan and, J and Gail have joined us on three and four. And pilots, here's the story. I want you to fly out into the city and locate Gazim, the thief, from the early part of the movie Aladdin. He's stolen half of our magic scarab. We'd like it back. And I'll give you a clue. Gazim's hiding underneath a building with a big blue dome on top. Mm -hmm. All right, let's put on the HMDs and we'll get started. Each of the test stations here is represented by the monitors above that station. Pat, you can go ahead and pick that up and put it on your head. I'll help you here. So you'll see what each pilot is seeing, and I'll change the audio from one station to another so we can hear everything as well. And pilots, I've turned on the tracking system. You can go ahead and take a look around the room. You should be able to look left, right, up, down, even straight down over the side of the carpet or at the back wall. You don't need to steer, just turn your head there. All right, stand by. Here comes Iago to give you some last minute flying advice. Okay, did you get all that? <laughs> look, just nod your head and try to act like you have a brain, okay? Either we find the scarab or we're not going anywhere. Got that? Good. Okay, split up. You go that way and uh, I'll go this way. And don't be a moron, okay? Stay away from the gods. We'll start out listening to the audio that's on platform one with Pat. Pat's taken to the skies, we should be able to hear the breeze up there. I guess we're still hearing some of the city rumble, he's slow enough. Or the occasional building you brush by. <laughs> and we'll listen in here with Casey on platform two. Obviously Casey more of the Top Gun style flyer. <laughs> That gives a pretty good look all over the city. And Jonathan's in the middle of the market here on three rules in the town. Each pilot can look and fly wherever they want to, and the computers figure out what the pilot should see and draw it for them. They draw 60 different pictures per pilot per second. Oh, platform one, Pat's got gazillion. Yeah. Give our other pilots just a moment. We'll listen in with Gail on platform four. Okay. Pilots, remember the clue. Look for a building with a big blue dome. At the bottom of that building is an archway, and Gazim the thief is inside there. <laughs> Casey's pretty close here on platform two. Oh, looks like we're running out of time. Well, let's have a nice round of applause for all of our pilots. They did a good job. just part of what will be a much larger story when the attraction is finished. When we are done, we plan on building enough stations so that everyone that comes in can fly on their own magic carpet in Aladdin's world. And Casey, if you'll fill this out for us, that'll help us in our research. Until then, we're still collecting all the data we need to make sure the attraction will be as enjoyable for everyone as is possible.